hopefully you're here for, you're interested in starting a local game dev community. It doesn't even have to be a game dev community. It could be uh, an art community or an uh, anime or, oh, PowerPoint for <laughs> software game. That's bad. Well, let's try again next year. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just go down the line and everyone introduce themselves. Uh, so I'm Craig Herndon, I'm the lead organizer for Boston Virtual Gallery. So we're the sixth largest VR meetup in the world with over 5,000 members. Um, and yeah, I'll give you the story and move on, but yeah, that's me. I'm Jonathan Schreck, I'm the current president of the CFL. I'm Stephen Young, I'm the curriculum and instruction manager for a nonprofit, computer science educational nonprofit called the Code Group, and also the secretary of Hi, my name is uh, David Upkins, and I'm the founder of Memphis Game Developers. So I guess I'm responsible for all these chuckleheads here. Uh, my name is Ernest McCracken. Um, I am the uh, outgoing president of Memphis Game Developers. So technically, that makes me a nobody. Uh, um, Sergeant at arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's you know, look, I was gonna do so that's us um, as you know we created this this group on what is it, about four years now. Yeah, maybe about four years. Four or five. Years. I've lost track of time. So uh, I have a couple slides here where I just kind of want to show you know the history of our group um, and the types of activities we do. Um, and again, you know this is this is a, a you know, this is a local community. With Made, but it doesn't necessarily even have to be game development. It could be, uh, it could be anything. There's actually a lot of groups. I know uh, you run a, a local anime group in Memphis as well. So um, and there's like um, art groups, and uh, it's all about kind of bringing um, your local talent together and working on projects and so on. So um, starting a local game dev community, um, uh, us as Memphis game developers. Uh, so first, it started out as three guys in a makerspace, um, in a very generous makerspace, because we didn't have memberships there. Um, you know, he, he created a meet a meetup group uh, called um, Memphis Game Developers, and two of us found it. One, one of the other guys' name is uh, Nick Day, who, who isn't here. He's gone on to do um, greater things, and uh, we would meet there once every two weeks, maybe. It was about uh, once a month. And actually, before the later space, we were just meeting up at like the library or the coffee shop or whatever. So you don't really need a dedicated space to start off with. Yeah, just somewhere to meet, somewhere to gather. Uh, even the, the so we, we met at Mid South Makers. And even them, they started meeting at coffee shops um, before they could actually afford to have their own maker space. And uh, we would meet, we wouldn't even have an agenda. We would just kind of talk about like the current like technology that's out there. And uh, for most of us, I mean myself included, I was not even, I had done no game development up until that point. Um, I'm a programmer, but had not dived into the realm of game development uh, myself. Um, we, we are an official Unity users group. Uh, Unity picked us up as an uh, official community member. Um, they became our corporate sponsor. Um, coincidentally, around that time, we, we you know also stopped using Unreal. Um, you know, just, you know, coincidentally, of course. Um, but so we kind of focused on Unity as our um, game platform, and it was, and Unity is a good game platform, especially for learning. Uh, it's very powerful, and it has a very uh, compared to Unreal. The learning curve is a bit better, uh, a bit, a bit shallower. Um, so at that point, once we we would start learning things ourselves, we had to how to do all these different things in Unity. Uh, we started doing workshops where we start telling other people how to do. You know, how, you know, we do uh, mechanical animation. How do how do you do animation in Unity? How do you do pathfinding and, and artificial intelligence? Um, so once we started learning them, we, we kind of started spreading that knowledge so other people could also learn. Um, we do various, so we do these workshops where it's just learning, you know, we, we do workshops on, we do intro to Unity workshops, and then we do some advanced topics like AI and um, skeletal based animation. Um, and these are all free, open to the public. 
Um, and then we also do uh, what's called game jams. And game jams are really fun. They're, uh, there's a couple of really uh, official game jams. Uh, Global Game Jam is probably one of the biggest. Uh, you have Blood and Dare, which is also very big. And we have we have a partnership with the University of Memphis, so we do most of these activities at the University of Memphis. Yeah, and uh, Nashville game developers they do the same thing where they they, you know, they have a partnership with Vanderbilt and they do their uh, game jams right there at Vanderbilt. Um, and it's not hard <coughs> to work with your local university. Your local universities really like doing stuff like this. Um, and the game jams are really just, you know, you have, um, there'll be a theme in two or three days, you try to build a game. Um, and, you know, it helps to kind of build collaboration. There's no, co there's no competition to it. It's just you build a game, uh, it forces people to work together within a timeline without having, you know, much of anything on the line. There's no money or investors or anybody that's really waiting for this thing. But it, it you learn how to collaborate with other people within a timeline. And people and, can come in with, with a variety of skills. They don't have to be programmers. They can be artists. Yeah. They might just have some ideas they want to make, like a game that they want to make, that, but no, no particular skill that would be useful to create a game. It also forces constraints on you, so you're not going to build the next World of Warcraft or the next Overwatch in three days. So you have to limit your scope to what is feasible within those 48 hours. Which is good. You want to start with something simple. I and mean, a lot of a lot of the game developers have, you know, made that mistake of, you know, starting on that giant, vast, massive multiplayer game <coughs> with their dreams. And you know, two years later, you're just like, wow, this is going to take like 10 years. I have like eight of them on my hard drive yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, so these are the types of events we do, um, game jams. And you can think of, you know, there could be other events for other types of, um, of groups as well, like, you know, art jams, or um, if you're, you know, doing like a indie film Group, you could try to make a film in three days. You know, there's this can this can this can go to like any type of subject. What's the schedule like for for our events? Like how often do you do different events? Um, so we do workshops once a month. Um, the game jams, I would say we do probably once a quarter. Uh, they kind of so like Google Game Jam is once a year. Let them dare several times a year, and there's there's tons of different game jams. There's one that there's one uh, one game a month. Is also one of them. We don't do all of them, uh, but we try to do like kind of once a quarter. We'll do a game jam, um, and, we, and global game jam is two weeks after PAX. Yes, yeah, like I believe so. Uh, it used to be at the same time as PAX, which really sucked um, because we can't, you know, we do a game jam and then half our members are gone off to PAX town. So, uh, but game jams are really fun. Really way good way to to learn. Uh, not just how to build a game, but the process as well. Sure, you guys actually started with a game jam, didn't you? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I think Craig and I, we actually were both programmers too. And our first foray is we just showed up to a game jam out of the blue, like, let's do something. And you'd be surprised at how much you can learn in 48 hours. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like a fire to force you to learn things quickly. And the, the other part about the game jam is, like, a lot of people who could be really talented game developers are way too scared that of showing up and then not being useful to the team. Um, so when you know the community, you need to make it as clear as possible. You need to know nothing and just come as you are. Like if you do have a certain skill set, let us know so we can divide the teams up. Um, but you really want to make it as accessible as possible to anyone from any background that can come in. Because uh, as more people you bring, the better ideas you're going to get, and you'll find skill sets where that's one of the really good ways to find a team member if you have your own game project is going to these community events um, and then working with other people and be like, hey, like this person was really reliable that we did during the game jam. I wonder if they'd be reliable on the project as well. And like that's a good way to get to know them and be able to start your own thing after. Great. Um, so after a while, you know, we, we, we used to meet at the makerspace, the self makers, and then uh, we were able, then when there was, uh, we were part of this, we, we started joining this uh, umbrella organization called Memphis Technology Foundation, and they had a, um, they had a partnership with uh, U of M, University of Memphis. And so we did a lot of events there as well. 
Um, well, after we started getting a lot of core members, we decided, hey, we want to be able to have our own dedicated uh, VR setup. Uh, we couldn't do it at the Makerspace because there, you know, there's a lot of other members there that a lot of stuff gets hacked at the Makerspace. If stuff is left out, people will, will take it apart. And we don't, we don't want people taking apart, taking apart something like that. So um, we, you know, just like the, Maker, the Mid-South Makers had banded together to, to rent out their own space, we did the same thing. And um, we have an office that we call Memphis VR. And um, you can, you know, you can become a member there. I think it was like $45 a month. And we have a dedicated, you know, room scale set up uh, uh, vibe along with like mixed reality, so we have like a green screen around it. Um, we have you know pulled our money together, put it in, and we you know some of us volunteers some computers to actually have uh, workstations there with nice graphic cards and Unity installed and all these other tools installed, so that other members who you know want to go into VR development maybe but they just simply don't have the money. Or the room in their own house, because I mean, you know, a room scale setup is is not easy to just accomplish in your house. I mean, that's like your entire living room. Um, so we have this dedicated setup there for not only us to do some game jams there and to meet there, but now you know we can we can you know have other people come there and do do um, develop. Um, so that was kind of like a major milestone for us was to be able to have a place that we could call ours. Um, that we could come, that we could go to at any point um, in time, um, and then we also uh, the University of Memphis offered us a uh, also another, another uh, VR lab, um, and so we do some VR development there. Uh, this is actually the FedEx Institute of Technology. Um, a lot of the stuff there is focused on robotics research and, and VR, um, but a really really cool spot. And we'll do open houses there, and we do open houses at the Evans VR as well. Uh, the open house events are really nice because it lets the public come in and check out and see all the cool stuff we're doing. Um, when you're just meeting at like you know coffee houses or, or uh, classrooms, there's not really an open house element there. It's usually there's some type of agenda. Um, but our open houses, we're just like, hey, come in, check it out, look at, play some cool games, um, check out the you know the cool stuff we have. And I think you'd be surprised at how much people want to get in when you're starting. These guys have asked for stuff, and uh, we get we've gotten free things for game jams. Like a, we got a bike that we use for a game jam. And this company just one of the many perks. Shout out for Zoom. Thanks, guys. <laughs> one of the one of the many perks of, of starting a local game dev community is that um, <coughs> you, you start to get some you know notoriety. You start to be known throughout you know other groups in around the area. As well as you know various companies, so um, you know Oculus Rift sent us uh, two free headsets along with two prototypes of their touch controllers, um, just for us to, to play with. Um, we've gotten uh, we got the, the Vive uh, Tracker puck. Uh, we got an engineering sample of that. So there's there's a lot of perks to it. You know you, you can you can get a lot of cool stuff sent to you. Um, for just kind of you know organizing organizing these kind of things and food. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can get uh, there's generally some corporate sponsor. If you get enough members, um, you know some corporate sponsor will pay for food at your events if you just you know mention, mention their name. Yeah, recruiters love us. Um, so there's you know there are a couple of studios that have I, won't, I don't want to say created out of Memphis game developers, but um, people that were from Memphis. That started coming to the meetings, and then they would create their own studios. Some of them are here. Uh, so you know, Tra uh, John Trag and Craig over here are from <coughs> Digital Precept. You know, they create Digital Precept, and a couple other studios that um, are either associated with or came out of, of you know the the local community group, which is really cool. Um, again, we do the monthly meetups, and we put posters around campus. Uh, campus area is really nice, you know, to, to kind of advertise in. Um, most college students that go into computer science uh, want to make video games. Go figure. Um, and actually, 
the majority of the panel here, we all went to college together, we're all in the, we were all in the computer science department together. Um, at the same time though. Not at the same time, but yeah, kind of around well, the, the same. Ernest and I met because we did, like, it was a local college uh, student group. Yeah, that we yeah. Went through. And like from there, like, we started building our own local communities in different cities. Um, but again, like, it's how you meet people and those relationships do last. So it's not just like building community <coughs> and get something out of the community as much as it is like building relationships with other people. Because uh, that just goes a long way. Because I've had people like two years, like I had talked to them, but they remembered me from like what I helped organize or the event I put on. Um, and now like, you know, they work for like Microsoft and they want to reach out to me to get my group involved and things like that. So it's just remember that because um, sometimes people will frustrate you. That's another part of the panel. Like <laughs> and it's, it's very important um, to realize that the end goal when you're frustrated while trying to organize, like maybe you didn't get the fun you're expecting, um, that the end goal is like the relationships you're building with these other people. So as long as people are in a room together, even if you don't have pizza or even like a, just a projector or anything, as long as you're sitting around, you're talking, you're learning from each other, and you're enjoying your time, uh, that's a good community. Yeah, that's something definitely. to be proud of. Start small. You're, you're inevitably going to start very small, but I mean, you'd be amazed at how you know you'll get more and more members, and then people will start to reach out to you. You'll start getting emails from you know Microsoft and these other groups that they say is a discovery. Um, so I just want to talk about some of the some of the game games we did. You know, this was Lone Bear Thirty Three. We made a game called Dead Code. This is one of, one of our first. first. Yep. Yeah, this is one that we joined. Yeah, that's the one. These are the ones that, where these guys showed up. <laughs> what are you um, doing today? I don't know. And it was it was actually a really nice looking game. Uh, it was again, you know, there's only so much you can do in a couple days, so it's going to be very buggy. So um, it was actually the first time I'd ever. And I built out the entire level. Yeah, you yeah, built the entire level first day one of using Unity. Um, so you then find it online and it doesn't work. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can find these on all in on itch.io. Um, and then Love Bear 36, uh, we made Nebula Strike. And so there was a theme to all of this. And I think the theme for this one was uh, so the theme for Dead Code was was it you are the monster? Yes. Yeah, so you're a janitor robot in uh, a space station, and you go crazy, and you go in and kill all humans mode. And that's basically, that was, that's the, that was the base, base of the game. Sure, right? uh, uh, yeah, we, <laughs> ship it. We, we narrowed the scope and made it where the only like mechanic was like there's this teleporting mechanic. So that way we weren't trying to build like 30 different things. Like that was the one thing we needed to work, and then you just use that mechanic to go around. Yeah, you chase the humans. The humans are a little bit faster than you. But I think you can approach them from behind and they won't yeah, notice it's like you. Yeah, classic like, 80s slasher film trope. So if no humans are looking at you, you can teleport anywhere as long as it's out of sight. Yeah. So you just warp around a corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Nebula Strike was uh, kind of this geometrical, um, you know, 80s montage style game. Of, uh, so it was called the, 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 the um, theme was a small world, so we, we basically had this kind of uh, competitive uh, tower capture game uh, that was built on a very small globe, and you know you would, it was kind of multiplayer. It was a really cool, real, real fun game to, to build. Um, Global Game Jam, uh, I think was the last, the last scale game jam we did. Um, no, I actually didn't work on this, but uh, Entry and the the um, this was like Global Game Jam. This was at uh, Hack Memphis. This was uh, Hack Memphis 2016. Oh, really? Oh, okay, okay. And then the theme was was um, you had to you couldn't you couldn't kill your enemy directly. You had to find an indirect way to to destroy your enemy. Um, then we have some ongoing projects that members have. So every member has you know various projects. We even do days where we'll have like Saturday show offs where you'll just come and bring your project. If it's just a screenshot. You know, bring it and tell us about it. You know, tell other people about it. It's good for people to be open um, to 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 really talk about the, the cool stuff you want to do. Um, then uh, Kung Fu Shadowfist, which by the way is at the Expo Hall. You can play this today, right? Probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, they, they close. The Expo Hall closes at six. So. 
<laughs> I've worn a couple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, their booth number, it is actually right near the stairs that go down. When you leave the escalators, um, like right in the middle, like the booth's like right there. So if you look at down the escalators around, it's yeah, in that, like right in front of the escalators. Um, and then there's, if you, want, if you want to hit us up, um, you know, we have a meetup.com page, we have a Facebook page, um, and we also have a Twitter, Twitter handle. And you can give us, you know, we can give you more information about that afterwards. And just to give a shout out, uh, I wasn't able to add this slide, but um, so this is Boston VR, which is like ten times larger than us. And, and so that's the thing that's like which Craig helps out with my career here. very different. Um, so we've progressed far enough where it made sense to incorporate for a 501c nonprofit. Um, so I wish I'm a CEO, but coming in, be like I'm the CEO of this group they've never heard of. So it sounds very pretentious, so I just say we organizer because it makes me more approachable. Because um, that's the kind of community that we built uh, was a very approachable community. Because um, when you're trying to develop a community of people, um, there needs to be a degree of vulnerability and accessibility. You need to feel like you can talk to anyone, um, and that's why it's very important to us to uh, not come off as standoffish. But yeah, you, you want to be very approachable. Um, because I mean, it's, a, it's an open group. You don't want to sound like you're you're some elite club. And a lot of a lot of groups, you know, once they they're old enough, they tend to feel like that. Uh, a lot of gaming groups are like that, where you really don't feel like you know you want to get involved, but it doesn't really feel like they want to teach you anything. They just want to play their games. Um, so it's just really good to make sure you have you know that kind of open um, you know open view for everything. And the, the other thing is, like, since we're this large, and that's, like, as you grow, the things get more and more complicated. Um, so I have basically have, like, 12 other people that help me run this because we're getting emails from all these different companies that are trying to do things. We're to the point where we get so many companies requesting to try and come and talk at our events because we have such a large community um, that they pay us to come in and talk, and that covers the pizza, that covers the venue. Um, so like as you grow, there's a lot of perks, but then there's also a lot of challenges. Um, so when I said like, earlier about people frustrating you, um, the Boston AR group, they're a little bit small enough, so they started later. Uh, they're only like a thousand people, and I was talking with their lead organizer, and- You were there, a thousand people, and they're smaller than Boston VR. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was talking to him, he was like, there's just like this one guy, like he's not doing anything wrong. It's just really, really annoying. Um, and then like it clicked, it was like, okay, what percentage of the population do you think like is just gonna not be able to, uh, you know, like there's, there's a certain percentage that are not going to be able to, they're just gonna be weird, right? There's that, <laughs> let's just put it that way. Like they're gonna be people like that. And we show if you're weird. <laughs> there we go, awesome. Uh, but there's gonna be people that like don't mesh with you and how you communicate, so let's put it that way. Um, and with that, and understanding that, just like, all right, so let's say that's 1%. All right, so that's 1,000 people, great. You have 10 of them in your group. Um, so for me, I have 50 of them in my group. So it, like, it, it just makes a whole lot more sense because you're like, you think it's like this outlier kind of thing, um, but like as you grow, just know that there are gonna be people in your group you don't like, um, and you still need to be as accommodating and welcoming as possible because that's just how communities continue to grow. Because believe it or not, that person is probably gonna end up bringing like their friends and like all this other stuff too, that are people you wouldn't normally hang out with because they're not your communication style. Um, so that's another thing that grows. The hardest part about growing your group is getting outside your network. So like I know Memphis Game Devs has a problem uh, getting tons and tons of artists because it's a lot of programmers. Um, whereas the, like if you make games, you need artists, you need 3D modelers. Uh, and it's like, how do you do this? And even in Boston, we have the same problem despite there being like MIT, Harvard, all these colleges there. Um, more, more colleges per square foot than anywhere else in the world. And like the way we found is that by posting it in like the <coughs> MIT building is a very techy kind of thing. And when we went to this like, uh, it was like a bar, it was like a comedy club. We hosted an event there and suddenly a ton of artists showed up. Um, and so be, know that like the type of building you're in can actually influence the type of people that will show up. Um, and also location matters as well, because uh, if you guys are okay. to relocated to be closer to students. And we'll do, we'll do uh, every now and then we will replace one of our workshops with a social event. So instead of meeting in a classroom, 
will meet at uh, their <coughs> this arcade in, in Memphis called uh, the Rec Room. And we'll meet there. And we won't have an agenda. Uh, the Rec Room will give us a uh, our own area where we can play video games and just hang out. And we'll, we always see a lot of new people coming there because, you know, when you go to a workshop, it's kind of intimidating. You feel like you got to stay for the whole two hours. Whereas a social like thing. in class and you have to take notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you feel, feel like you're in a class, you're in a lecture. Whereas a social event, you can just come for 15 minutes and have a drink and then leave. You know, just kind of meet everybody and, and that would be it. Yeah, well, um, you know, people ask us if it's disrespectful, they don't take notes during class. And we're like, just show up. You're just here to learn. No one, there's no, yeah. no, <laughs> here. There's no test next week. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to ask these guys questions as a moderator, but if you guys have questions, just come up to the mic here and, and I'll, you know, you, you can do the next question for, for, for all of us. Um, I'm going to disconnect my computer so everybody can see my questions here. And just on the note of being accommodating, I mean, when people come into your space, one of the ways that you can make it feel so you're, it's not an elite group is what, welcome people as they come in. I mean, that's just like a simple thing. I've been into groups where you walk in and nobody turns their head, nobody even looks at you, and you're just like, well, Maybe you walk back out. I don't know. Yeah, but so when you're like when you're like twenty people, um, you know people are gonna come in. You, everyone's gonna know everyone. Uh, but if you get up to like the 30, 40 people are coming in, you're gonna get people who have no idea who anyone else is in the room. So you, even just having someone like introduce them to someone else, or be like, hey, what are you, why, why are you here? And it's like, oh, I came here because I heard there was like uh, they needed artists to read him. Oh, cool. You should talk to these people uh, and introduce them to people and help get them. Yeah, and that's not a natural skill for me. I know I'm I'm very introverted. I know a, a lot of it, I mean, even just if you look at computer science and programmers in general, there's that kind of you you tend to look like stay into your own group, and so I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm generalizing. Okay. Well, that's what I was talking about about like getting outside your network and be comfortable around people that may not have as many things in common with like as you would with friends. Because um, I I do have. A bunch of people um, that like we might have like one thing in common, and maybe that's the one thing we talk about um, while while we're like at the events. Uh, but at the same time, like when you need volunteers to do things, like it's just awesome having these people in this group. Um, so it's really like, what are you trying to get out of the group, and how do you make it to where everyone gets what they're looking to get out of your group? Um, and a lot of that, like just the people dynamic of it, I think is the hardest part to manage. And also, you know that everybody that walks through that door for your group is there to make games. So that's instantly one thing that you have in common with with them. So it's been complex to start at least. Yeah, I actually was not anywhere near the founding of this group. I, I came in just a little over two years ago, and I had just moved to Memphis. And first thing I did was look on meetup.com and see, like, well, what's, what's in Memphis? And so this was one of the first. That leads me to uh, the first question, which is, uh, what technology platforms do you help uh, do you use to help with communication and keeping events like this organized? Uh, so we use Meetup. <laughs> so yeah, Meetup.com. Yeah. Meetup.com is the main one. Uh, it does cost to uh, start up a Meetup. I think it's eighty or ninety dollars right now a year. Uh, but once you pay for it, you can start like unlimited number of groups. So that's why I started uh, this group and also uh, Anime Memphis as well. Uh, we also have a Facebook group, which is free. They also do, you know, scheduled events. Uh, Telegram and Slack and Discord are our main uh, communication uh, platforms. What else we got? Uh, so over at Boston VR, since we're, we've grown, so we use a lot of ways to manage things. And also when you have like 20 people trying to organize different things and events, uh, it's hard to keep track of. So we even have like a Google Doc that we have like things, who's working on what, who's responsible for what. Um, having very clearly defined goals where everyone knows exactly what they need to do is very important when you're trying to do larger uh, events or things. Otherwise, you're just gonna get people who don't know exactly what. So anyway, back to the main question. Um, the What we wanted to do is have more ways for the community to interact with each other. So like a Slack channel is something we added in. Um, we even have a LinkedIn group for more businessy things because we 
it gives you think like, oh, let's just do a job posting board, but then it's like a small one that not that many people are going to go to. So it just makes more sense for us. We just like just post it for our and page. We encourage people who are looking for jobs or uh, looking to connect with other people to, to interact with us there. We have like another email list for volunteers. Um, and then to reach out to the group, we actually use the shout function in Meetup. Um, and then people can also turn that off. So what we do is about two weeks before an event, um, we'll send out the, the announcement of it. And then like the next week, Lex will send a blast of it, like, hey, here's everything you need to know. So it ends up being like a reminder, because you can only <coughs> announce the event before it gets emailed to everyone once on Meetup. Um, and you need to find other ways to interact with people to allow them to know, or at least to be reminded of an event. Yeah, so we actually just started. Yeah, we just copied and pasted the No joke, I just called them up. Oh yeah, we, have a, we added a Steam, view, Steam group for people just to be able to play games together. Um, so, so like, just think of like, the weird thing for us is that we're like, we have this huge community, it's like how do we be able to allow them to interact with each other outside? If you're just 20, it's like you just text them or call them and like you can organize that. Um, but once you get a certain size, it makes more sense to do more official groups and events for the different types of things. Um, and the, another type of event that we'll do is like little hack days where everyone just gets together, brings their PCs, and then just like works on whatever project it is. And then if someone needs to learn how to do something, uh, they can then just ask the people that are there. And it's a very collaborative environment, or if you're stuck on something, you're you have a bug in your code or something, you have someone come over and do it. Maybe someone will even make a model for you because they're like, all right, well, I guess I'm not working on this part of my project today, so it looks like you need help with this. Um, yeah. And these, these platforms, I mean, other than Meetup, I mean, it's, it's all free. Um, there's, no, there's no monetary barrier there. I mean, even the Meetup, it's not. On Facebook. Yeah, true. 